thank you for being here and uh, hear my presentation. I'm Elettra Gorni, I come from Italy. I practice Moku Hangar and I attended the Nagasawa Artist Residency in 2008. But also I work as a teacher. I teach Italian literature, Latin language and history of art in the Italian high school that's called Liceo. The experience as a teacher, especially teaching, teaching Latin language, put me facing a big question. How information and content can be carried successfully by a teacher or an artist to the public? A language, a grammar, a syntax are needed in order to communicate successfully. And the further questions follows this first one. Can we found out an organized language in Japanese old Mokuanga? Um, with my short uh, presentation, I will try to um, put some seeds about this to try to answer. <laughs> so, first of all, I would like to dedicate my talk to Weba Sensei, who told me how to print according to the Mokohanga method during the artistic residency at Nagasawa in 2008, and to Keiko Kadota, to whom I'm and I will always grateful for having conceived and led the Nagasawa residency, and in general to have a thought that Mokohanga could become an instrument of knowledge and cultural exchange. The observations I will explain in the next 20 minutes are my humble attempt to understand the receipt and the alchemical mix by which Japanese woodblock prints are so attractive and full of charms and successfully communicative. My goal is to make an attempt to organize a series of suggestions that affect me emotionally every time I start working on a print and I seek inspiration surfing on the online library databases that preserve Japanese prints. I'm trying to figure out if these suggestions are only my subjective impressions or actual recurring items attributable to a distinctive aesthetic folk a Japanese text that has consequences in the representation of the space. Since I started using the Mokyohanga technique in my artistic production, I have been convinced that a working method brings its own unique aesthetic, a special influence on the work produced by it. This occurs in a special way when making prints relating to landscape using the Mokyohanga technique. This time, I focused my attention to the space and its narrative value in the set of fan print, fan prints Shika Shashinkyo, made by Hokusai. My intention is to show that Mokuanga technique provides Hokusai with specific resources, for example, the Bukashi gradation, narratively effective. The technical and expressive support coming from Mokuhanga mixed with iconographic motifs typical of the traditional Eastern spatial representation, for example, the presence of waters, mountains, sky, clouds, and mistness, contributes to the building of a visual and narrative syntax specific of Japanese woodblock prints. I started thinking about this research three years ago when um, I was preparing the paper for IMC 2014, where I discussed the composition of the subjects in the traditional Japanese Mokuhanga prints and the role that some features of the technique, such as the Bokashi gradient, had in getting the description of the space of the classical prints we all love. Among the images I had chosen to illustrate my theory, one particularly I liked most. It was a Hokusai woodcut belonging to the Shika <coughs> Shinkyo series. Uh, in detail is this one, the seventh one, titled the Tokuza Kari. There was something in this print that went beyond the use of Bokashi in obtaining the rendering of the empty and full space, something that went beyond the traditional composition of Sino-Japanese painting called Sansui. 
Shika Shashinkyo literally means true to life mirror. Given that the print was intended to be a true to life mirror of a poetic text without using written words, it was not difficult to understand what was profoundly attractive in this work, the controlled, almost grammatical use of the space. Instead of using ideograms and words that speak to the rational mind, the space is described by following a compositional syntax made of alternations weighted and distributed with great care. Alternating the three dimensions, vertical, horizontal, and di diagonal, alternating gradients and lines, using void, void and signs and fullness of color, or density of signs and their reflection, and rhythm and talkatives or silence areas, depending on the needs of the visual narration. I will focus my investigation on this print not before giving a general picture of the work to which it belongs. Shika Shashinkyo is a series of 10 literary prints produced by Hokusai in 1833-34, developed as in a vertical format called Naga Oban, Human beings are the main subject. In this case, famous Chinese and Japanese poets or protagonists of their poetic works seen in specific moments of their history. This is a series directed to a learned audience, full of references and details that only those who knew the lyrics and the authors represented could fully understand. The scholars who talked about this series emphasized the great role that the psychological representation of the characters has in it, given that Oksai Inten stated in the title was to build a true to mirror portrait of ten poets referring to the ten prints of the series. However, this would be a portrait in the oriental terms. The true representation of the subject uh, doesn't depend from the realism or veracity of physical representation, but from the psychological deepening. Hoxai aims to achieve it, not so much by the hatching and the description of, face, of faces, as with the relationship between human figures and the natural environment in which they are placed. It is precisely through the ten natural settings of these prints that Hoxai finds the way to tell without words the stories and feelings of the human figures represented. The landscape becomes a psychological deepening tool that exalts and amplifies the feelings of the characters, such as melancholy, nostalgia, dedication and memory. This operation is carried out by Hoxai exploiting uh, exploiting the entire arsenal of the figurative tradition and the oriental aesthetics, customizing it with the resources that xylography has made available to him. I will speak briefly and by points about the observation that the series Shika Shashinkyo has triggered. The first, the depicted space is symbolic. The eastern aesthetic of the Sansui landscape is known and respected by Oxai. We will find in this print the typical elements of the Sansui landscape representation that are water, mountains, rocks. The Japanese word Sansui means mountain, sun, and Sui is water, mountain water. Second point, the peculiar component of Oxai resides in the role given to these typical and traditional elements. They are no longer only represented in a typical order, but are used to tell something by the disposition of individual elements and by the use of colors. Third, um, as a narrative component, rocks, mountains, water mirrors, water courses, sky, waves, and bridges acquire a syntactic value. Rock in the foreground, alternating with watercourse waterfalls, alternating with fog, alternating with the cane thicket, and all point to a precise visual, visual rhythm in accessing the image. It is 
as, as if each natural element constituted a descriptive threat. To show this, I deconstructed the image. Starting from the first page, we have the rocks, then the rhythm of the small waterfall on the river, followed by the curved Chinese bridge on which the protagonist walk, walks. Then there is ground embankment, and the protagonist facing our gaze drives us to the other stretch of water, this time quiet. Wedging at a corner in a rocky shore, leading us to the fog, and then to a cane thicket, followed by a descriptive silence consisting in the fo of the fog, followed by the density of a cane thicket's marks, then clear contrasting spots of two trees, behind and above which opens the night, described at first with a mist cloud, then the full moon, and finally the sky, described only by the color and by the bokash gradient. Fourth, not only the natural elements are skillfully, skillfully alternated to narrate as a story, the rhythm of the signs tells, the rarefaction of the signs tells, the diagonal cut tells, the empty space alternating with the design space tells, even the gradient color tells. We note that some Bokashi nuances and gradations can replace detailed descriptions and artifices such as fog, vapors and clouds can be used to lighten the represented space and the void is aimed to be an active and meaningful element of the description. Fifth, because of the features described above, we can say that the picture the depicted space is a naturalized human space where nature is organized to communicate and connect with the human being. We can think that they are landscaped gardens. One of the prints, this one, called Minamoto no Toru, referable to the Japanese court poet Toru Daijin, is also helping us with this association and suggesting it. The protagonist is Minister Minamoto no Toru, who had recreated a maritime landscape of northern Japan in his garden. The print represents him while finding his fictional landscape in surrounding nature. Sixth, there are Japanese treatises on the art of garden composition, such as Saku Teiki or another one, Sansui Narabini no Gata no Zu, that can provide us with many insights to better understand the sense of the landscape for the Japanese culture and in Hokusai. In Japan, an intuitive vision of nature and the cosmos was cultivated and elaborated through the practice of meditation. Second, art, whether to physically compose a garden or to compose it graphically as Hokusai did in the sprint, played an important role in this way of intuition. Art is the, te is the technique, the rational ordering that connects and manifests intuitive and spiritual vision. The Oriental Garden, even when, even when represented graphically, is a figurative symbiosis of right angle and natural form. Eight, the technical path of building a garden, and these ten brains are ten gardens, is to recreate natural landscapes by providing the elements that make them evocative. Typical elements are very water, such as rivers, waterfalls, ponds, and sea, or stones, such as rocks, earth, mountains, or wood, vegetation, often trees and shrubs, to a lesser extent flowers, and bamboo, such as forests, as well as buildings and roofs. The object of the evocation is the energy, the force, the intuitive transmission of sentiment. The landscape of the garden becomes the device of beneficial energy and allows to accord human existence to natural rhythms. Ninth, there is both for garden and for this ten garden prints a variety of landscapes, marine, river, lake, hills, and mountain ranges. 
Hoxai uses all this repertoire in the ten natural composition of the Shika Shashinkyo and also implements the principle of Oriental Garden aesthetics, according to which the order of the arrangement of the, ver of the various elements must not be either geometric or random, but must follow a specific intention designed to compenetrate natural rhythm and human intervention. Tenth, finally, the Mokuhanga technique plays an important role in this mechanism of humanization and narration of the landscape. The logic of nature as a narrative tool, the use of Bokashi technique becomes essential to depict the silence, the poses, the caesuras among the presence of dense and rhythmic signs, while the carving of the signs gives life to the literally speaking part of the visual narrative. And uh, at the, uh, last, Japanese stylography is essentially a painting tool, in my opinion, not just a tool of graphic serial reproduction. Printing from wooden matrices with semi-transparent colors allows to give the color multiple features, flat surfaces, an interrupted transition from one color to the other, tone depth thanks to the repetition of print passages, all without the heating and personalizing presence of the brush stroke. The appearance that comes in a, is abstract but vital detached but radiant, profound and meditative, as Eastern aesthetics requires art. Hoxai seemed to me the most interesting also to analyze, thanks to the maturity of his technique and language, and because of his deep link and refinement of the Japanese xylographic tradition. Being able to introduce and master a new vision of space the Western perspective and the chiaroscuro, being able to balance this, this innovation with the Eastern aesthetic tradition, and for this, from this crossroads, being able to create a new way of representing nature, enhancing its emotional, sentimental role, then no, knowing how to exploit technically and linguistically the expressive features that the xylographic medium offered. Let's remember a technique considered minor to the painting. Uh, all this seems me, to me poetic and artistic drivers still shareable and desirable today. Thank you. Do you have any questions? I will try to answer in my simple English. I visit just two weeks ago, I visited um, an exhibition in Paris at the Guimet Museum that uh, um, uh, exhibited a, a series of prints from different uh, print, uh, artists, um, sp all speaking about language, and uh, Shika Shashinkyo were represented, but as scenario, as scenery, um, like something in the theater, uh, nothing at first stage. Uh, so they made the critics at Guimet Museum said the, the most important thing are people, and then the landscape is only um, like a scene in the theater. Said so I don't agree with the idea because, in my opinion, the landscape is interactive. Is uh, uh, deeply bounded with the people represented. And uh, Okuzai is uh, great using these rhythms from, uh, between the landscape and the people to describe something we all consider delicate, elegant, but I think we have to start thinking about this brain as a language, like some uh, kind of language we sometimes understand, sometimes we have to search about it, about. And uh, language is um, not only a description, but also references to the cultural uh, situation uh, and uh, even where uh, 
oxide level. So uh, the, using rocks is not only because there are rocks in the uh, nature, but because the rocks are memory. Uh, rocks are heard with memory. So you will find always in Japanese prints, uh, in the Edo period and also before, rocks. But uh, it's not a decorative motif. It's uh, something that's spir it's spiritual. It's very deeply connected with the uh, uh, culture. And uh, I think uh, I like to um, study this uh, mix, this uh, uh, hidden uh, uh, things uh, that uh, these prints are so beautiful and celebrated, uh, still, uh, um, uh, I have to, to say, uh, to revelate. I understood that there was some text first and then Oxide made kind of a uh, without text, uh, like a series. The, the prints are without text. All yes, ten but, prints uh, are without text. Is the text, uh, is it uh, from one uh, person writing There text? are, uh, what Oxide use uh, different sources for okay, this print. many uh, texts uh, from many stories, like poems, yes, and yes. so it is just like poetic... Um, Sometimes there are um, like uh, it, it, um, as I can say um, the text attached to the sometimes as are uh, fiction so we can in okay, fiction in yes. selected cases this is fiction so they are uh, protagonists of uh, stories mm -hmm. sometimes they are um, these uh, they are uh, real people mm -hmm. uh, who live in uh, old times and uh, who practice poetry. All, uh, all, uh, all the ten prints are inspired by uh, written text written by or uh, poets or um, high people like politics. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the prints represent or protagonists or the authors. Mm -hmm. But it's not very important. The, uh, com uh, the audience was very high in understanding the yeah. meanings. They were reading the, uh, the pictures without the text, they knew what Yes, happened. there are uh, strong re uh, references for someone who knows the stories. Mm. Also, the seventh is a story known. And uh, Oxai didn't need to use uh, uh, words. Yes. Mm. And this is a strange, uh, it's a special case of this, because uh, um, we have uh, a lot of prints with uh, written text. Mm -hmm. This case, that, but they are ten literary prints, and uh, the um, I use uh, different uh, sources mm -hmm. and uh, created his own story. Yes. So I found the description of these stories on the British Museum uh, website. Uh, some of these prints are described very well. But uh, all the critics uh, agree that it's, uh, Ukusai uh, wrote the story uh, okay. with images. It is like a, we have got in Finland an uh, epic uh, story, Kalevala. It's the, the yes. you, what, what is this in English? Kari. <laughs> it's the, the National Epic of Kalevala. It's not the translation. Yes. How the, yes. it's uh, the world in was um, born and everything. and. If we have a picture or a painti painting from some part of the poem, so Finnish people know immediately what it is yes, about, and yes. they maybe sing the, the song. <laughs> yes, but here maybe... So this is maybe the same situation, so Japanese I people think so. knew immediately what is going on. This, uh, the public is an elite, mm -hmm. so... Mm -hmm. Yes. It's know. like uh, the uh, Odyssey or the uh, Iliad. Yes, 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 everybody. It's a rewrite, rewriting is something yes. that's a cultural uh, heritage. Yes, yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the British Museum, but there's currently an exhibition on late Hoxide there. Did you see that show at all? I wonder if you've seen the exhibition at the British Museum of... Now going on? It's now on. Mm -hmm. Currently on. Hoxide, Hoxide later career, the second half of his career. I think you, uh, sorry, I, need a, I don't know if I understand. Yeah, there's an, Paul said there's an exhibition of late Hoxide prints at the British Museum now. Did you 
Now, yes, but there are a lot of exhibitions about oxide. Oh, no, my, question, in... my question was not really that. The question was, in his later career, Hoxai did a series that he didn't complete, which is called A um, Hundred Poems Retold by a Nurse. Do you know the series? I, I know the series, but I, have a, I know a lot of prints, so I don't remember them right now. I was only going to ask, do you think there's some connection between the two, this set of ten and the set that was not completed? I wondered if there's any connection that you could see. I think it, it changed his name and it changed the way to represent things all along his life. So connection are for sure. But the, the, I'm in Paris, the exhibition about landscape uh, was talking about the perception of the landscape. So the prints were connected about a subject. So this is a way to approach a big uh, um, production by Yokusai. Uh, otherwise, it's very difficult to... So uh, the, I'm not a specialist about Okusai. I like to find uh, in Japanese prints something that I need to understand about the beauty of Japanese prints. In this case, the uh, narrative uh, use of the landscape for me is very it's, uh, it's important. So I chose Okuzai, but I prefer Hiroshige. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But Hiroshige is, um, is another field, it's a uh, photography, the, um, another kind of memory. This is literature, so you can uh, speak about grammar and syntax with these planes, because there is a syntax in uh, uh, introducing you to the story. You are guided, led in the print. It's not only, oh, that's beauty. You uh, have a different moments to, to understand uh, all the things are, that are described. And I think it's uh, something very sophisticated and not, uh, not uh, very well studied yet. Because uh, the people uh, focalize about, about the beauty, about the technique, through Tekoxai is understood, it's great. But um, the idea to uh, use um, the language, to find a language in this print, is still to, to research about. <laughs> how, how old was Tekoxai at this point? Um, he was uh, not young. In his in the maturity, they were late. This print, he changed his name. Uh, it's it's no more Hokusai. It's and are very skilled prints. Yes. So uh, his research is about uh, um, perspective are done here and about the chiaroscuro. All is uh, mixed and uh, understood. So there is a formal perfection in this print. And I think the uh, master, uh, in master the are uh, the subject and the technique and the idea, uh, the composition. But also, I think it's a sort of phenomenal recall of motifs, motifs as well. An incredible recall, incredible memory, an incredible repertoire. Yes, uh, because the Eastern art is a repertoire. Yeah. It is. So, uh, all the prints, if you start looking at the prints, searching repertoires, you can understand the prints are like variation about a thing. And it is not a bad thing, it's great, because you don't have to try to find something new. You have to use it to contact the yeah. nature and your inside uh, spirit to understand. So you can imagine that I'm looking at one of those prints, you could spend an hour or two hours having a very enjoyable time. Yes, so because they are mechanisms uh, to produce meditation. This is the idea of Eastern art, produce meditation. So they are so abstract and not, and not, not realistic because it's not necessary. I mean, because it's a bit like uh, um, uh, Tula was talking about time. I mean, uh, how, you, uh, how you interpret all the different things going on is, is not, um, uh, it's not rational like in a, in a Western picture at all. Um, 
I think there is a very <laughs> uh, difference, profound difference between uh, Eastern and Western. That's great. I I don't know why. I'm thinking about it because I'm Western, Western. So, and I'm very fascinated about this these words, but more about prints and less about paintings. So there is a tradition about with in the painting with these things, rocks, uh, water, uh, sansui is a, a kind of painting, a traditional painting, typical. But the painting is fascinating, beautiful, great. But prints are uh, more um, closer to you, to your sensitivities, in my opinion. Maybe more abstract, maybe because the, the prints were pro produced to be uh, spread and sold. So the simplified and uh, more re uh, reflection and abstraction. So they um, works, they work better than a painting. Painting is more personal. Uh, prints are less personal. The beauty is not, uh, is a, uh, a consequence of Okyo's eye understanding, not uh, only for these uh, skills, because he was not the printer, he, on, he only drew the... Do, would these prints always, always have been mounted on scrolls? Or no, they? absolutely not. Never, never. Almost never. So they would <laughs> just be seen. They were so back. loose. Yes. Always, always loose. Yeah. Maybe you, you said the people bought the prints and then passed it into uh, the scrolls. I think. Or pasted them directly on the walls or on yeah. the fusuma yeah. or anywhere. It I mean, depends on the wall. <laughs> so would you have looked at them that way? Yes. That way. Mm -hmm. that way if you put it in an album, but that way if it was stuck onto the fusuma or the wall directly. I mean, Maybe. They were, they, were, they were made to be stuck up somewhere or stuck into a book. I saw a movie, uh, Akira Kurosawa movie, uh, Jojin Bo, maybe, the, what is the, mm -hmm. you maybe know the movie, and there they were, so yeah. pasted on the Fusuma, I was so surprised <laughs> yes. to see uh, Ukiyo-e there pasted on, on the wall. I have seen Jojin Bo many times, but now I noticed the first time the, the ukiyo -e yeah. pasted there. Yes, yeah. I was very happy to see but, uh, There were very popular prints. Mm. Not uh, value yeah. about yeah. in yeah. art. Yeah. Yeah. Western uh, vision uh, uh, has uh, raised the, the value, but uh, Western people started to collect. Oriental people uh, went after. So, Ota Museum is uh, newer than the older collection at a museum in Tokyo. But as a big collection about uh, but it's uh, after co European collections. Japanese understand that their uh, capacity from the water water, <laughs> I think. But also famous architects and uh, famous critics collected prints in uh, starting the 20th century. Frank Lloyd Wright was a collector and a critic and a dealer. <laughs> yes, yes, and it wrote uh, uh, critics about uh, Japanese prints. There are a lot of sources, not expected. <laughs> He did. I have a book. A text. He went in Japan to build a big hotel in Tokyo, and he was collect. He was collecting yet the print, and he was also a dealer. He bought in Japan and then sold in the United States. Yes. Probably, uh, I'm not sure what's happening around the next paper because the uh, next uh, person is not here.